All right, so we're getting close to have almost finished a full device, I think, minus the the chip. So we're gonna try to get that all done right now. So I take my chip, put in my little grabby guys like this, and I. And my ground wire down here on the end, just like that. And while we're waiting for soldering iron to heat up, I want to show you something else. The 220 ohm resistor, I just do like that. I don't use any wire for that part. I just use the leg of it, and then I do a wire for the other side. So that's how that looks in there. So what I need to do is cover that bit there with liquid electrical tape though so it doesn't short out on anything. I just love that stuff. So easy. Alright, the iron is hot. That looks pretty good. Good and hot. Alright. So, I'm going to bend it a little bit. Is that long enough? I'm going to cut it too short. So when I set my chip in there, a little bit different than most other people I've seen. That's all however you can cram it in there. As long as the connections are solid and go where they need to go, however you fit it in there, it doesn't matter at all. It's just how I started doing it and then I got better at doing it that way, so it's the way I do it. Yeah, that'll fit. That's just fine. So, I have a bunch of crazy wires everywhere. That's just part of it. Get a little bit better at it as you go. What I like to do, because I know those two are going to the same place. Oh, you can't see it, but. It's the, the wire that comes off the three position switch and the wire that goes to the positive pin of the atomizer of the five ten. So so the is there a way I can get this any better? How's that? That's a little bit better. So this guy, let me do it this way. Oh, I can't flip it. Damn it. <laughs> okay. So I put a little piece of shrink wrap on these two guys, and this white wire is this white wire right there that comes out of there, runs all the way up there like that. So that lands at the V-out pin. It's the same as the one that goes to the positive pin of the atomizer. So I do that just to kind of get them out of the way. I don't have to worry about accidentally putting it the wrong place. Yeah, just make it a little bit neater while I work. So what I normally do first is the resistor because that's easy keeps things 
keeps things where they where I want them to be too. So it does a couple of purpose has a couple of purposes. So I just really can't see anything. Pretty good. Looks like that'll work. So Cut that excess off. Get that out of the way. Like that. And then I'll coat all that with liquid electrical tape later. Alright, let's do let's do the power in. So That is this wire, which comes off the button there, which comes off the PFET, which is fed by the fuses. You dig? And I actually changed the way I did things a little bit. I pull the battery uh, for the display from the PFET. Does that make sense? So it lands right there. So yeah, that's how I do that now. A little bit easier, one less wire to have to bring from the chip. And it saves a lot of wire too, because it's a piece that long instead of a piece that long. And if you find better ways to do this, do it that way. I ain't saying this is right. Just how I do it. Just how I do it. So. That looks pretty good. And sometimes that need a third hand where these, these things don't work. I do this. So. That's good. So. That is what it looks like. Alright, now for the one that tells the chip to fire, the switched portion of the button. And I pull the zener right off the button, like that. So. I do use wire in this case. It's too long to just leave it the leg of the zener. Cut that off. Strip the wire. How long is this going to be? 10 minutes almost. So maybe I will have to make another video.